Hey guys, it's Kai from Lucas Land and Royals. Hope you're doing well. Today I have another exciting clutch. This is part of my lightning pie project, or I should say making lightning pies, so stick around. Now the pairing in this is a Xanthic Het Pied to a Cinnamon Pied that is also possible sandblast. I want to show off this boy. Unfortunately he's in shed and you can see he's a little bit dull. But you can still tell he is a much darker snake where he has color and pattern. When cinnamon is combined with pied they often turn out to be high white like this boy. The sandblast gene is an ingredient to urban camo, which I believe is a mix of super pastel, super cinnamon, sandblast, and het pied. Obviously there's not enough pattern here to definitively say he is a sandblast. I don't have all the ingredients here to produce an urban camo and won't be proving him out to be so with this breeding. So sandblast is not the objective in this pairing. What I'm looking to hit is a cinnamon pied that is 100% het for exanthic so that in a year or two I can throw him back to the mom and hopefully hit some cinnamon lightning pie. Since this pairing has two recessive genes and hets, I thought this be a good opportunity to do a little genetics calculation to see what our odds are of hitting what I really want which is that cinnamon pied 100% het for exanthic. So before I show the eggs, Let's do a little genetics calculation. So I know I have done calculations using my methods, but I get a lot of questions about it. So I figure for this video, we'll revert back to using Punnett squares. I think a lot of people are able to follow Punnett squares. It's much simpler. And my method is basically based on Punnett squares. So in this pairing, we have a visual pie, which is going to be the male. And I'm always going to put the male across the top. Since he's a visual pied, he has two copies of the pied gene because pied is recessive and you need two copies to be a visual. So we'll denote that by the two lowercase p's. The female, I'm always going to put on the left, she is het for pied. That means she only has one copy of that pied gene. So for the other gene, we're just going to put n for non-pied and a lowercase p for that het. So now we have to do is carry the letters from the top and the left into the cells. So over here we have N, P, N, P, and then two lowercase p's, and lastly two lowercase p's. So up here, because it's one copy of the pi gene, these are going to be hets. And down here, it has two copies of the pi gene, these are going to be visual pieds. So since we have four quadrants here and two of them are heads and two of them are visuals we have a 50 percent chance up here of producing heads and we have a 50 percent chance here of producing visual pies so if we take the 50 percent and equate them into fractions we get half and a half and obviously two halves make a whole so we know that out of this entire clutch, half of them are going to be het for pies and half of them are going to be visual pies. Next up, let's calculate the statistics or chances of hitting an exanthic. Now, if you're any bit uh, familiar with genetics, you probably already know we're not going to hit exanthics, but let's see what that looks like. So again, the male is going to be represented on the top. And because he is not exanthic, he's not het for exanthic, we're going to denote his genetics with two N's for non-exanthic. And then the female will be listed on the side. Now, she is an exanthic, and exanthic is recessive. So we know she has to have two copies of the exanthic gene, which I'll denote by the lowercase a's. And then again, just carrying the letters from the top and left into the cells, we have N, A, N, A, N, A, and lastly, N, A. So in this pairing, we know that 
out of the entire clutch. These four quadrants represent the entire clutch. 100% chance of getting het for Xanthic. So no matter what, even though the babies will not visually look Xanthic, um, they are all going to be het for Xanthic. So lastly, let's calculate the chances of getting a cinnamon. Again, we'll use the Punnett square. Now the male is cinnamon. Cinnamon is a codom, so he only needs one copy of it. Um, if he had two copies, he would be much darker and he would be considered a panda pied, but he's not. So we know he only has one copy of that cinnamon gene and the other one is a non-cinnamon. So we'll put N for non-cinnamon and a C for cinnamon. And again, male on top, female on the left. And she is, well, she's not a cinnamon at all. So she has two ends for not being cinnamon at all. And then again, carrying the letters from the top and the left into the cells, we got N, 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 C, N, 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 C. So here we have 50% chance of not being cinnamon. So not cinnamon. And then over here we have 50% chance of being a cinnamon. So I like to always convert these into fractions. So again, 50% equates to one half, 50% equates to one half. And oh, by the way, over here, 100% is one over one or just one. That's pretty simple. So now if we want to figure out the chances of, let's say getting a pied, that is het for exanthic, we would just multiply the pied, which is one half times one over one, which we still get as one half. So now let's say we want to calculate the chances of getting a pied that is het for exanthic and also cinnamon. So now we take all three of those fractions. So we have one half for pied times 1 over 1 for our chances of hitting a pet for xanthic times the chances of hitting a cinnamon and we just have to multiply all of these together so the numerator stays as a 1 the denominator is 2 times 1 times 2 which is 4 so we have a 1 in 4 chance of hitting that pied cinnamon pied pet for xanthic and for those of you who like percentages, we can equate this back to 25%. So that's about a quarter of the clutch will be cinnamon pied head for Xanthic. Now that we know statistically what our odds are, let's take a look at how many eggs we got and what the chances are of hitting a cinnamon pied head for Xanthic. This morning before I went to work, I saw she was done laying and two of those eggs were kicked out, meaning she wasn't coiled around two of them and I already took them out and placed them into the incubator. Now that I'm home from work, it's time to pull the rest of the clutch. I'm not sure why she kicked them all out, but it should make things easier for me since she's already off the eggs. There she is. So I'm gonna move all the stuff out of the way. I have no idea why she kicked out all the eggs. So right now it's probably um, useless to mark them because they probably all rolled and she doesn't seem to be too oh, I could be wrong here there we go all right so she's just going to go to a temporary tub and she's going to stay there for a little bit just putting the lid on that tub so she'll stay for a little bit while I get these eggs situated. Uh, what I want to do, and here I'll show you the two from this morning. I hope the camera's able to pick it up. So those are the two from this morning. And we have two, four, six, eight. So a total of eight. What I want to do now is just get my flashlight 
I'm gonna go ahead and candle the ones over here, get them in the right position, and then mark them. So I'll show you. See right now you can see it's pretty much yellow. If we turn it, you can see the network of veins. And then right there in the center, in that little circle, that's the embryo. Let me go ahead and get a marker. And now we work on the next one. These eggs are feeling really cold. I have no idea why she kicked them off. Because she was coiled around them this morning. This one, I'm having a hard time finding the center. I think that's it right there. I think that dark spot is it. To the next one so we'll just keep going until we have all of these rotated in the proper orientation right there just double check that one yep that one's all right see how this is kind of yellowish and I can already see the embryos on the flashlight side. So there it is, right there in the center. Got a couple more to go. I think that's it right there. And the last one. Oh, this one was completely upside down. And there's that little circle, the bubble right there. All right. So let me go ahead and turn on the light. And get this one last last one marked off okay so now obviously these two with the blue marks are roll rollouts from this morning I even put an R on there but pretty much now all of them are rollouts so these are not sticking together which is strange but let's just go ahead and see if we can situate these it's gonna be a tight fit it might make sense for me to just hook a couple straws in here just to get at least this one situated And then we'll just have them all, see if we can get them all to line up nicely. Kind of a delicate process right here. These eggs are really firm and plump, kind of rubbery. A bit awkward actually because they're usually more leathery feeling but these are rubbery and I can't remember if that was how it was last year or not but definitely not any of the other clutches so I think that's pretty good give you another look Turn it this way so you can see. So there they are. Two, four, six, eight, 
eight good eggs. Um, just hoping that the fact that she kicked them out didn't interfere or impact their development at all. I'm gonna go ahead and put these in the incubator and then I'll come back and show you how to clean up the mom. Okay, so I've been adding water into this tub with the female. I'm just gonna add in the second half of the water. And this is just lukewarm tap water that has been treated for chlorine. So all I wanna do is just basically give her a bath. Like I said, it's been treated for chlorine and chloramine. And they're basically just disinfectants that come in your tap water. The way I treat it is I use tap water conditioner, which you can get from pretty much any pet store that sell products for aquatic animals, fish, let's say. Um, and so I figure if the conditioner does a good enough job that allows fish to breathe in the water, it should do a good enough job to allow the snake to just soak in the water. Uh, there's multiple other products that do the same thing, other brands that do the same thing. So just make sure you read the label and you know, use it according to the instructions. So there she is. Um, I'm just gonna let her soak a little bit and then I'll come back and splash her off a little bit more. Then dry her off and she should be good enough to go to her new tub. So right here is her new tub that I'm setting up. It's already got the paper and I'm just gonna drop in a water bowl. Next, I'm just gonna go pick her up from the other tub, dry her off and bring her over. This girl is just super gentle. And we'll just let her glide in. And as she's gliding in, I just have the towel wrapped around her so that it just dries her off as she's going in. And at this point, I can also just dub double check to make sure all the eggs are out of her. I do that while she's gliding over my hand. And then that's it. I say we have a pretty good chance of hitting a cinnamon pie hephorexanthic based on our statistics and calculation and the number of eggs we received. In about 55 to 60 days, those eggs should hatch and at which time I will post another video. So if you want to be informed of future uploads, make sure you just subscribe and hit that notification bell. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a like. Thanks for watching. Please share and I'll see you guys next time.